I was spiraling this week, really something real terribly, just, you know, getting in my own head about my business, personal, all kinds of stuff. And Lee automatically called me. It's like, you good? And I'm like, yeah, but no. It's like, what's going on? And then once he listened to me get it out and tell what my plan was, he literally just broke it down for me, plain talk, what was going to work, what probably wasn't going to work. and mm-hmm. But not just telling me those what yes and no, but what you can do instead. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when it comes to direction from men, they they take the emotion out of it mm-hmm. a lot of times. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always going to cry. When I'm talking about my life and what's going on, I'm going to cry. And my homegirls I can go to, they're going to empathize. They're going to want to hug and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Lee is straight to the point. And then afterwards, all right, I love you. You have a good night. My brother, same way. He's going to listen objectively. But then once I'm done, he's going to be like, all right, you're good. I, I feel for you. But this is where you messed up. This mm-hmm. is what's wrong. This is what you may need to do. So I just feel like, I, but I surround myself with men that I respect. Mm. If I can't respect what you do in your life, I can't respect your opinion or your thought process. Mm. So it helps me to understand and know that there are great men in this world. Mm. And none of them are perfect, but Mm. I know the work that they have done and are continuing to do. And I know that when they're speaking to me or anyone else, they're doing it from a place of love. They don't always Mm. get it right, but I know their efforts behind the scenes to be an impact to me their wives, their children, their sisters, their mm-hmm. brothers, what have you. Mm-hmm. So that's why I have hope for conversations like this and know that there is a shift happening, but everyone doesn't think like me. Everyone mm-hmm. doesn't surround themselves with mm-hmm. influential, positive, uplifting men like I do. Mm-hmm. So where my view is this way, not everyone has the ability to have that same viewpoint. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, that that's that's one of the things I appreciate about you, because Mm. you 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 have a space, even though it might be difficult at first, you have a space in your heart to hear men. Mm. And despite the fact that we communicate differently, like you are still willing to listen. Mm. And unfortunately, I don't know if that's reflective of the female delegation, because because when. I'm having conversations with women or even I'm seeing conversations on social media or even like in the comment sections of some of our videos, they default to the lowest possible type of dude that they could think of. Mm. They don't think of Lee. They don't Mm -hmm. think of Ja. They don't think of me. They think Mm. of Earl that did them wrong back in 97. (laughs) Which kind of ties into what we were talking about. And you brought this up um, off camera about how women are literally creating or incentivizing the behavior that they later on complain about. Hmm. So have you thought about that differently since our conversation? Like what, what power do you think women actually have when it comes to dictating the type of men we see? Don't beat me up too bad. girls. I st- <laughs> I'm still all for every women, but I, these conversations are not easy sometimes. Mm. It's it's easy to talk and you know give your opinion, but it's not easy when you have I have 33 years of experience working against me from a woman's standpoint. But I feel like from sitting and talking to y'all and then going back and reflecting and understanding where you're coming from and not just putting me personally into it, but the masses, I feel like we we have the power. Like women are able to shape, reshape, cultivate, and create how the man is going to behave, respond, act, and treat you. And I'll use myself for an example. Back when I was dating, sometimes I, I, I'm, a, I'm a natural nurturer. So mm-hmm. like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you. I'm going to make you feel comfortable. I'm going to invite you into my space if I feel like you can come there. Mm-hmm. And it's the thing I do naturally, but... If you're not, for me, you're a man that's not used to it and you're like, oh, I like this. She cooks, she, her house is clean. She let me, you know, chill. And you want to do it more. So you're going to, you're going to be whatever I need you to be in that instance. And I can think of two or three different guys who I knew from gate, I should not have continued on with, Mm -hmm. but because of the way that I treated them so quickly and so early on, trying to be, you know, that friend, that good listener, just kind of that nurturer, help you through your whatever you got going on. 
I'm looking at, you know, what you could be, again, that potential. All these things that, again, we as women do, instead of looking at the reality of you, I've taught you how to love me. I think you said something like that last time, like we teach, like women teach men how to treat them or how do we, we let, a, we let the fuck boy be a fuck boy and we allow it until we no longer want it anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm guilty of doing that. And I understand that if we withhold things like the cookie pie <laughs> and demand more from them from the beginning mm -hmm. and not get hope to that potential of what we think could be or what they may be while still giving them a chance to grow, because there's a thin line between holding on to hope for potential and dealing with the reality of someone where they are right now and understand that they can be better and they're working towards being better. Mm -hmm. So there's a fine line there because sometimes it is just a fuck boy. Sometimes it's just somebody that has not been able to have the break they needed. It's someone yeah. that is still trying to become better, but they haven't gotten there yet. So learning to differentiate between those two and then understanding how to behave for your own sanity to either one. If you're gonna go to the, if you're gonna go towards the fuck boy, don't be mad when his fuck boyness continues on six months down the line, a year down the line, when you're ready for him to change, be something different. Mm. If you're gonna go towards the man that has potential and you mm. see the work in him, don't fault him if he's faltering. Yeah, you have to be able to help guide him and also understand in helping him that you're helping yourself, because relationships are journeys. They ain't just okay. You start off one way and then you're gonna be that way forever. So understanding that when you're going through this journey with this person, you have to be ready for the ups and downs, the hills and valleys of all of that. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to make sure you're being true to yourself in all of it. Because if you're not, you're going to fall in one of those heel, no, those dips and it's going to all fall apart for you because you did not deal with the reality of who they were. So what, so what you're saying is that women today, they automatically see a certain default in a man. Like they they default to looking at us a certain way mm. versus being good leaders. Mm. They have this outlook. I, I, I'll take it a step further and say, um, and also to address your point. Yes, I think women default to thinking we are, um, you know, in the matters for they call it Pookie and Ray Ray, right? Mm. And, Not Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> and whenever like, in public forums, women are talking about men and all the things men can do differently. They're mm -hmm. talking about those men. But to your point, because uh, you said, you know, one of the things women can do is like withhold the cookie pie and, uh, you know, and different things like that. My hesitation with that is I know some dudes that are willing to wait for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, however many mm -hmm. days you come up with a Steve Harvey told you to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and once they hit, they it's out. Over. Or they, yeah. they'll, they'll, you know, show you who they really are. Mm -hmm. So I would actually say what, what women should spend more time doing is investigating why it is that they are so attracted to toxicity. Mm. Right? Like, sense. why is it that, especially our women in our community, they mistake certain counterproductive aspects of a man's uh, personality as charisma, mm -hmm. right? They, they think, oh, a man who's unpredictable is sexy mm -hmm. without thinking about what is a, an unpredictable father going to be like exactly. to my kids, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of the things that we prioritize as a community in general, but, also, but as women particularly is excitement. Mm -hmm. And excitement doesn't translate to sustainability. It doesn't translate mm -hmm. to long-term and, and, and a productive relationship that's mm -hmm. going to cultivate something better. And I think the, the reason why so many women look over good dudes mm -hmm. for toxic dudes, as we say, mm -hmm. is really because they associate those good dudes with boring. Yeah. And they sure. associate those toxic dudes with exciting. Yeah. So I think that's what we need to focus on. That's instead the dilemma. Of that's the dilemma. Why, sure. what, why is this your idea of exciting and why is this your idea of boring? Oh, uh, you ain't got to, I mean, I'm, for, I'm old and boring. I don't know. <laughs> you got to, that's, not, that's not a me question because I, I like boring. I like mm. unknown. But we got to, I think for one thing that I can say is going towards it is it's what's glamorized. Mm. It's what's thrown in our face more. Like, and, and people have an obsession now with being in the limelight and being seen. Yeah. So however you can do that and get that, you're going to go towards it. And usually 
you're not in the limelight for a great reason. Mm -hmm. Like even like the the people, the rappers and the actors of today, they're not that great at actually actual rapping and acting. Mm -hmm. It's the frenzy they call. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. things they do outside of their mm -hmm. actual careers mm -hmm. that are yeah. like, oh my God, I would just love to live that life mm -hmm. and be in this. And then we get like that little snapshot view of somebody's life for 10 seconds mm -hmm. and oh that's what i want that's what i'm going towards mm -hmm. that's what i see all the time oh my i want to be my man my man my man that's but you're delusion, not the delusion yeah the delusion it's, factor it's, mm -hmm. i saw a tiktok that said um being the lulu is the new salulu yeah mm -hmm. and i have mm -hmm. never connected with something more because people would rather live in their delusion for sure than face the reality Validate. of their life mm -hmm. And, or whatever situation they're in and go forward. But delusion is the new reality, yeah. I feel it's, like. It's, there's, this, uh, there's this guy on Instagram, this white dude. He's a uh, computer programmer, developer. Mm. And he created this app where it uses AI to fake as if you're live. You're like doing a lot Instagram live. Mm. And you have a lot more viewers than you would actually have. Mm -hmm. So he, he did the, he, he set up the AI in a way where like, It'll it'll add automatically add dummy comments mm. based on what it sees in the background. Wow! Right, so th th that's dope. Yeah. You that's have fun cool. at that part, but also at the top, it'll show like twenty thousand people watching or fifty thousand people mm. watching. And he set it up in the club and had like women walk by and they would see this and they would now be interested in him. And we oh, just because wow. they ask, "Who are you?" Oh my, yeah. who are you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just because the clout. Clout. Yeah. And now, like somebody, they might have walked by, yeah. you know, on a regular day. Mm -hmm. Now they stop in. One girl is trying to kiss him in the mouth and things like that, mm -hmm. just because they associate him with clout, even yeah. though it's just an app that it's he just made. An app, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I say that to say, and to your point, it might be controversial. I don't know, but the only reason the baby is famous is because he shot somebody at Walmart. Yeah. Because sure. he he beat up somebody at the mall. Yeah. It's not because of his music. No. Same thing with Sexy Red. Same thing with Sukiana. Yeah. We are so preoccupied, I think, generally, and more mm. specifically, male-female dynamic, with the circus mm -hmm. as sure. opposed to the substance. Yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Mm. Circus versus the substance. Mm -hmm. Great. That's a great... That's a great... Man, that's that's it right there. <laughs> for sure. Um, just having that, like... Because I, I, I come from a school of thought where each one teach one. Yeah. Right? That's how I was brought up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... We had accountability. Yeah. And the interesting conversation is as young black men growing up in the inner city, in the ghetto, in the hood, we actually was on the street corner teaching that the black man was God. Mm -hmm. Right? We had those conversations. It was never about the black man being less than who he was. Because mm -hmm. we was always looked at as less than. And the black woman, she was always the mother earth to the seed, right? So her responsibility to the seed was to raise the seed with the information that the black man was giving her. So we had more leadership mm. as young black men. We held each other accountable. We had what you would consider to be ciphers. So when we stood in that cipher, you had to show and prove that you was living right in the Zach. Mm. See, that's the school of thought I came from. Mm. See, now you don't have that. You don't have the accountability with black men, communicate with black men, asking them, hey, what's today's mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. And even though those mathematics equated to how man was walking and talking and living his life, it was more about now, what's the best rap lyric you got that could be very defiling to your character? Mm -hmm. See, we never lived that way. Mm -hmm. So I came up underneath that school of thought, each one teach one. So if I learned something of great value, I bring it to the next black man. And I taught him what his value was which still is with me today. Mm. So anytime I see a black man, I teach him, do you know the essence of who you are, right? It's not a mystery of what you are. You was taught that the mystery is something that you need to serve. Mm. But when you look at yourself and equate yourself to have that power, then you deal with accountability to change the reality of your situation. See, now we don't have that. Mm. Only conversations that we're having is, how can we compete with one another, right? Mm to where as though my value is better than yours and you're less than me and I get more respect because I do have 100,000 followers or a million followers, mm -hmm. right? So that's how we equate respect now, mm -hmm. where it was me as yeah. a brother on the street corner, just like you, even though we was trapped in those environments, mm -hmm. 
we was teaching the, the black man, you don't eat pork, no pork on your fork. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it, we understood that the swine, right, was poisonous to the system. So as we was educating each other on that, every black man knew that he had to live in a certain likeness, right? A reflection of one another. And we called each other a likes, right? And that was the beautiful dynamic because if I seen a black man such as myself, it was respect, it was value. There's no value system today. So we don't know how to respect and treat one another. We scaled each other based on how much uh, social media content we're putting out right? How many followers we have for, for producing music, like you said, such as the baby. Mm -hmm. There's no value in it, mm -hmm. but we still entertained by it, mm -hmm. right? So the ball has been dropped years yeah. ago, Yeah. but we, we have to learn how to figure out a way to communicate with each other's value system, because mm -hmm. our value system is completely lost. Mm -hmm. And the way I assess it is, if a woman's value system is lost, then the man value system is definitely lost, right? Because if a woman is dressed and half naked, right? And she knows that's gonna get her attention to get the male that she desires, then that man is gonna fit the spectrum of that. Mm. You feel me? But if she cleans it up, then that man has to change the dynamics of how he approaches her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, th I think it segues perfectly into uh, the whole pick me versus skip me phenomenon, mm. right? Because for me, I think the whole kind of idea is that mm. as a man, mm. there are certain things that I value in women. Mm. And if women can conform to those things that I value, I'm more enthusiastic about joining with them. As a woman, there are certain things I value. And if men can conform to that, then I'm more enthusiastic about. Mm. But these days, it seems like it's a negative thing to mm. be enthusiastic about conforming yourself in some way, shape, or form to men's desires. Mm. As a woman, how would you explain that to make sense for us? <sighs> I'm trying to process that. Because at, at, fir at first, I used to like, I used to understand the term pick me. It's like, when I when I thought of a pick me, I thought of, you know, you know that dude who, he wasn't trying to play fight until women came around, mm. right? He wasn't trying to joan and joke on mm -hmm. you until women came oh, around yeah, to make yeah. himself look better. Yeah. Pick me. That's what I thought it was, but for the female delegation. Mm -hmm. These days, if you say, uh, uh, do smell good, you a pick me. If you yeah. say he got a good point, you're a pick me. Yeah. If you say anything positive mm -hmm. or affirming for uh, about men, it's deemed as negative amongst women. And mm -hmm. why is that? I didn't. I didn't know that was a thing because I'm oh, all yeah, about. Uh, I'm all about light and uplifting. I, for me, I think of a pick me as someone who is going to jump onto a male side mm -hmm. or perspective negating their own when it's not really like it's not how you truly feel it's not how it's not your true perspective mm. so i'll put i'll use an example like this is probably not the best example but it's the only one that comes to mind immediately mm. oh episodes of love and hip-hop mm. mm. there was this one woman that was on there like she had just got on the season and she was like, like i said new and trying to make her i guess make her name mm. for herself but in doing so she decided to tear down every woman that came her way. Mm. And I know a lot of that can be production mm. and editing, but it's like, no matter who the woman was, it was something negative. Mm. You're bitch, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to move you forward, trying to get you where you want to be. But then when it came to mm. the dudes, oh yeah, that's my brother. I've been riding with him for 10 plus mm. years. That's my guy, you know? Mm. He, he just trying to help your ass. Oh, that's oh that's my that's my guy's woman. What are you doing over here? Like you, you flirting though, I'm just talking to this person. Like, mm. so to me, that's a pick me. Mm. When when all you can, when you all you have for the female delegation is smoke smoke, but mm. when it comes to the men, you all flowers mm. and roses and shit. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't experience a bunch of pick me women, but I know mm. they exist in that capacity. Or the mm. ones like you said, where mm. you're out and you don't start talking about oh my god, her hair's not done. She she don't want right. to like right. Mm. She girl, came out looking like that? Yeah, yeah girl, yeah. because that's what she wanted to wear. She didn't want to come out here mm. butt-ass naked. So, mm. but I don't really see that a lot in my world. Mm. And I think, honestly, now, in girl world, girls compete. How do I say it to where it doesn't sound terrible? 
Mm-hmm. Say it where say it sounds it. terrible. Yeah, sounds <laughs> terrible. I don't want to sound awful. Because it is. It's the, mm-hmm. it the is. truth. Yeah. You got time yeah. to explain. Yeah. Girls compete so heavily with each other now. Mm-hmm. From what I've seen to where it's like, they, they don't even have friends. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. just hook up with a bunch of people that are aesthetically pleasing mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. You you are good. You like think my about club friends. Yes. Or my, or, um, or my okay, let's let my brunch. Brunch, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. But yeah. it's not like okay, my homegirls, we're going, to, we're actually going to eat mm-hmm. brunch and it's something we don't we talk it's about like, problems. You know, know it's yeah. it's we're going to this brunch with the good hookah, mm-hmm. where the dudes are gonna be looking real good on the rooftop, so I can get mm-hmm. my good pictures because mm-hmm. pictures are more important to living in the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that's mm-hmm. I feel like friendships are is aesthetics now and not really mm-hmm. holding true to values. Of what they used to be. Do you feel like it's difficult for women to accept accountability from other women? Like if a woman is making that's another woman, question. you know, like yeah. do you feel like that's a that's a tough one? Because it's I know it's difficult for us. <laughs> <laughs> but when a woman brings yeah. something to a woman, do you feel like it's the same pushback? Yes, and I think that's because we're more emo- for us we're, we're more emotional, mm. and unless you truly trust this person or and you have an intimate relationship with them, mm. a woman's going to say, oh, that's just my, it's a hater. Mm. She ain't, mm. she's not really somebody that's looking out for me. She's look, she's, she's trying to wow. compete with me. Mm. I just thought she's about trying to do my shine. I just thought about how women has, have moved the man out of their space, mm. right? From like, if the man is trying to inform them about certain behaviors mm-hmm. and they don't want to accept the accountability, they have even moved the women out of that space. Mm-hmm. So there's no accountability. So it's just regurgitating uh, confirmation. Yeah. And now everything, everything is under the the guise yeah. of letting somebody be themselves mm. and, you know, be you, mm. nothing wrong with you. We've, we've forgotten that it's okay to be who you are, but all of who you are is not okay. Mm. Some of that shit needs Ooh, work. That's what's up. I know. I yeah. know it's good. Yeah. I know it's good. Yeah. Ooh, that's what, I, I know. I know. That's that's say it again for the people. Right. Yeah. It is okay to be who you are, mm-hmm. but all of who you are is not okay. That's mm. facts. And that's what women need to hear from women. That that's, that's I, that accountability I appreciate factor that, space that I was saying that. Mm-hmm. Remember, like my school of thought growing up, we held each other accountable as mm-hmm. men. Right. Yeah. So women, it's it's difficult for the for them to digest what we're saying to them because it, it comes off as if we're trying to control the situation. Mm-hmm. But you it's know, men like, don't hold men accountable either. Yeah. That's y'all true, don't true. y'all don't tell. That's one thing because yeah. you were talking about earlier. Men, men do men not tell their homeboys yeah. when they're messing up. But yeah. men can't hold men accountable. Yeah. That is a lie because mm-hmm. I saw a TikTok where this young man was sitting in his car eating his mm-hmm. lunch, talking about how his homeboy was at the club trying to talk to this female. Mm. And he straight up told him, jacked him up, was like, bro, I paid $200 for this tux. I, you don't make me call this girl my sister. And oh, I'll be damned no, if no, I'm no, going to no. let you that, mess that, it up. That's not yeah. what I meant. No, no. Oh, okay. Like, so brothers can hold brothers accountable, yeah. but men can't hold men accountable. Yeah. So, so like, I hear women say a lot, yeah. like, you know, um, black men need to call black men out more mm-hmm. on our toxicity or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. The only thing that holds men accountable is consequences. Yeah. Men like this this idea, and it kind of goes uh, to to this whole Brickgate situation, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Her whole thing was that a bunch of men were standing around yeah. while she got hit with a brick. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. <laughs> my take on the thing is like, because one of the dudes in the video said it. What did you expect us to do? Mm-hmm. Number one, the lady is known to be a fire starter. She's known she she has a certain mm-hmm. reputation. Number two. Some things apparently transpired leading up to that. And maybe those men were, you know, they were yeah. witnesses to yeah. that. And they decided, oh, this ain't. Yeah. Because, and I've, I've been saying this, protection happens under guidance. Like, I can, mm-hmm. I can only protect you if you're under my jurisdiction. For sure. But this idea that we have now that men should all be Batman and we should all be Mm-hmm. Stepping in to mm-hmm. random men and random women's situation, even mm-hmm. if the woman doesn't look like the damsel in distress, yeah. and like you know stopping it regardless of the consequences, yeah. it doesn't make sense. So, like, what what's your take on the Brickgate situation? <laughs> so, as someone who has a brother that they love dearly, mm-hmm. I feel like if it's not your business, it's not your business because people are so quick to shoot and ask questions later, mm-hmm. and as like I said, my brother is a black man. Mm. I know that he, he could be a hashtag in the blink of an eye. 
if it ain't your business, mm. you don't need to be minding it. And I feel my mama told, always told him, if a woman puts her hands on you, either shake the shit out of her <laughs> or hit her one good time mm. so that she knows not to do it again if you yeah. need to. And I, and I understand that, but it was always never put your hands on a woman first. Mm -hmm. It's 100% you never put your hands on a woman. But if one jumps up and puts their hands on you, mm. you take them, you, you do what you need to do to protect yourself. So for me, I don't expect nobody to put themselves in a position mm -hmm. that's going to cause them any type of undue harm, mm -hmm. undue stress. Mm. If you have knowledge that this... Look, this is the way you started this out mm. and you knew it could have gone there because one thing mm. people don't think about when they're, they're getting into it with somebody is you know your level of anger and where you think you could go mm. but you have no idea what's brewing in somebody else's mind mm. you don't know what traumas they're holding you don't that that man could probably could have just he could have lost his his child or something he mm. could have lost a custody battle mm. somebody could have died he could have lost his job or he could just be straight up crazy he could be schizophrenic. You know, he could have all kinds of shit going on. So you never find, know. What I find interesting is how all the women ran to her defense mm -hmm. without fully understanding. One hundred percent. What well, took place? And, and that that that's the question I was going to throw to both of y'all. Like, how do we reconcile what you're saying with the hashtag protect black women? Like, mm -hmm. what does protect black women mean? Because to the people who are uh, critical, mm -hmm. protect black women means that. Black men should be on some black panther shit patrolling the streets for mm. women in distress, even if those women put themselves in that distress. Mm -hmm. So what what does what does protect black women mean to to you and then to you? Protect black women means if somebody's down in your one of you, one people one of your sisters, you know they have no no reason to be doing it. Like for if that woman had been in a situation where she was walking the street and some guys were harassing her. Mm -hmm. just you know cat call and all this shit and maybe start touching getting handsy protect her because she's not causing any any kind of problems or stress mm -hmm. maybe you're at a grocery store but I've, I've actually been in this situation before you're at a grocery store and you're trying to get something you're trying to get an item you're trying to you know pay for it man don't like what you got on look what that bitch got on literally been in a situation before it was a white man look what that bitch got on and then you just start making comments y'all you're talking loud enough for us to hear but you're not really saying it directly. Protect black women. Because I'm, I'm going to speak up. But if random black man, I don't, like, don't really know, he comes in. Hold on. Hold on, bro. What you got against her? Why are you talking, why are you talking about her like that? You mm -hmm. want to have with somebody that can handle you? Those people quiet down real fast. Mm -hmm. So protect them means to, if you see them in a situation where harm could come to them and mm -hmm. there's no cause on their end, Protect them, teach them, guide them. You have young ladies that are, that, you know, father of, uncles of, make sure they're straight. Mm. Teach them the ways of the world. I, a couple of people I know have lost fathers young. Their best friends stepped up in that role. Mm. I know I can't take his place, but I can be here for your daughter. I can be here for your son. That's protecting black women. Giving them a, a positive male influence to go towards showing the strength and sometimes that strength is quiet, mm, mm -hmm. but also but showing them the strength of a black man so that so, my trust so, can be there. So what's what in your opinion, what's the confusion? Because I've seen a lot of people um, uh, come out with videos saying that this is this particular situation is such a great example of how black women are aren't protected. That's but then crazy. you see the other side come out and say that. Um, that protection that you're expecting of us, number one, it's at our discretion. Mm -hmm. And then number two, it happens under certain like circumstances. The other side is saying it doesn't matter. It don't matter if she was the it don't matter what 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 happened, mm -hmm. protect black women. That's so bullshit. what what's the So the to me the balance is in okay, if I do this thing to protect this woman, am I gonna feel like I have done something? That's notable. Do I feel like I've been chivalrous or do I feel like I've just been had? So for me, if those men would have jumped into the situation, you know, trying to beat this dude up, it gives that woman the feeling that what she did was right. Hmm. And I'm not okay with that. You can't, you can't save bad behavior because it continues the cycle of that bad behavior. Mm -hmm. 
Don't put yourself in a man's position and then cry wolf when that man shows you that he's a man and reminds you of your womanhood. Now, I said it to say, I've, I've been one who I fought dudes before, mm. but I knew my capacity. And I knew when I was getting in those situations that I wasn't going to be looking for nobody to save me. So to me, the difference in both of them is if the man feels like what he's doing, and this, again, it's up to his discretion because at the end of the day, you are responsible for your, yourself. You and you alone are responsible for you. Mm. So I 100% believe it's at the man's discretion. But if the man feels like, okay, this situation is getting out of hand, this, shouldn't, this, this can go wrong and I need to protect, your protective instinct kicks in, then the man should go in and do it. Mm. But if we, are, we as women are out here behaving badly, putting ourselves in situations that could have been avoided had we thought first. Mm. And I, again, some, I, I understand that sometimes even when you think things go awry. But you know the difference between something that could have been avoided and some shit you start in yourself. Right. And if you're the aggressor, I guess I'll say in the situations, you're the one that the antagonist, you're, you're making mm -hmm. it go on and you're pushing and you're pushing. You cannot be mad and blame anyone else about the fall, fall out when they push back. Right. But that's all about accountability. On a, on a I guess, philosophical level, I, mm -hmm. I don't think that protection and absolute freedom can coexist. No, no way. Because when you think about, for instance, the government, <clears throat> mm -hmm. it sucks that they listen to all our phone calls. Mm -hmm. However, they listen to all our phone calls to hear certain keywords, somebody say bomb or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, because they don't know if you're the terrorist or you're the terrorist. Mm -hmm. So we have to assume everybody's a terrorist, mm -hmm. which means that in order for us to enjoy that protection of that um, that vigilance and that uh, uh, that scanning that happens, we have to give up some of our privacy. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for women who are asking for protection, you mm -hmm. have to submit yourself under the jurisdiction, under the guidance, under the mm -hmm. tutelage of a man in a way. For sure. But I think why this conversation is so difficult nowadays is because this neo-feminism is pushing female absolute freedom. It doesn't yeah. matter what you do. It doesn't, mm -hmm. kind of like you said, you're perfect just the mm -hmm. way you are, however mm -hmm. you come, whatever your attitude is like. And the people who can't handle it are the problem, Yeah. right? But then still expecting some of the benefits and some yes, of the yeah. privileges, because protection is a privilege. It's not a For right. For sure, yeah. Right? And, and the person who chooses to put their, use themselves as a shield, because mm -hmm. that's really what it is, Mm -hmm. They need to go through some kind of process of vetting if th this person mm -hmm. is worth potentially taking a bullet for, potentially stepping in the middle of. I've heard stories of dudes who they well, stepped on somebody's shoes and the person followed them home and shot them point blank exactly. on their lawn. Right. So like things escalate and men think about those things. But I think what's frustrating, especially with this Brickgate situation, is like the same women who are saying niggas ain't shit and we're not worth a damn. We don't do nothing for it for them. Are mm -hmm. the same ones complaining that black men don't protect them? Have you ever heard of the saying, wisdom is your guardian angel? Mm. So if women use wisdom in every situation, they would always protect themselves. Mm. There would be no need for us to step in unless there was a, a, a you know, a situation. Right. But those situations typically don't happen when you're safeguard. Like they say, if you really think about it, wisdom safeguards mm. every person. Right. So if you're using the wisdom in which you look at the environment that you're in, the circumstances that you're faced with, and you know not to react a certain way, that is called self-protection because mm -hmm. you're guarded by your wisdom. Now, if you choose to ignore the fact of your wisdom, then it's not my obligation to protect you because your wisdom is there to protect you. Mm -hmm. Right. So everyone has that through life experiences. So if I'm walking and talking the way that I, if, if I find myself in a situation, me as a person, I know that I wasn't using wisdom as my guardian, mm -hmm. right? So I wasn't using my life experiences to protect me. So if I go in, in the club, right, and mm -hmm. I just start bucking off and talking this and I get shot in the head mm -hmm. and somebody said, hey, you should you should protect my man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use that same yeah, logic so for we men. Don't, we don't use yeah. that. So what I'm saying is they're going to be like, he, his ass should have knew better. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So we get that all day long. We should have knew better. He yeah. brung that on himself. But when it comes down to the female delegation is nah, they don't know. They shouldn't know better. 
So the thing is that the, the, the reason why the conversation is so tough to have yeah. is because women do not like to deal with the responsibility. <laughs> the responsibility of protecting themselves. Like they right. say, even in their household, if you are trying to be led by your man or your male figure in the house mm -hmm. and you're over talking him constantly, <laughs> right? He might be giving you the greatest protection. If he, if he tells you don't go out the house with your ass halfway hanging out, cause you're yeah. going to get disrespected and then you get disrespected and then you expect him to run to your, to your aid. And he said, you shouldn't went out with your ass hanging out. Now you're going to look at him as somebody that don't love you, don't respect you. And, and you know, the thing about it, the thing about it is what's actually happening is if you, for instance, your, your, your man say, don't go out with your, with, with your ass hanging out. Yeah. If you agree to that, you're actually protecting him. Exactly. Because here's what annoys me sometimes. Like you'll hear, you'll hear a lot of, uh, people, especially feminists, they say that nobody protects black men like black women. We're on the front lines during protests. That's usually the main thing they use. Mm -hmm. We're on the front lines during protests. And my point has always been, that's not how you protect black mm -hmm. men. That is show, that is pageantry, mm -hmm. that is pomp and circumstance. You protect black men primarily in the kitchen. For sure. Just like we talked about without last time, primarily in the kitchen, without a doubt. but also, by your actions, not putting him in situations mm -hmm. where he has to potentially risk his life or his freedom. For sure. See, that part we don't talk about, don't talk right? About that. That's very that important. That part we don't talk, because yeah. j just like you said, you go out looking a certain way, because of that you invite a certain type of attention or going to a certain environment mm -hmm. and be at a certain <clears throat> time and you invite a certain uh, uh, attention. And now your boyfriend, your man, your husband, your, yeah. your father, your brothers, now they have to be Captain, save you. Exactly. And put to, even if they're completely in the right, yeah. potentially risk their lives yeah. or their freedom. So I think where we can evolve is instead of thinking about um, men's requests as some kind of like suppression, some kind of mm -hmm. patriarchal, uh, um, you know, binding of my rights in my hands. No, you're actually protecting him. You're protecting him from a system that wants to use him and wants him in the dirt. For sure. Because his actions... Whether jumping to your defense, whether uh, 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 the anger that might you know happen in a situation where he has to defend you, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. whether he loses, whether he wins, he can still lose. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think enough of our sisters have that much of a foresight because mm -hmm. what the the great the, word the, foresight the, exactly sure. because the the person that uh, Erica Lachey, they were calling her a pick me with this whole Brickgate situation, mm -hmm. and her whole point was. I'm not going to put my dad or my brothers in a situation where they have to come save me. Mm. So I'm not going to be there. Mm -mm. I'm not going to be arguing. With, if I'm calling my dad or my brothers, it's because, it's because there is no way out. My yes. life is in danger. Instead, we're seeing a lot of women use men mm. as pit bulls. Yeah. Come here, boy. Sick them. Yeah, sick them. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Wait till I tell my man on you. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and like you said, creating a situation. Right. Versus right. Um, allowing a situation not to even exist in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said wisdom is your guardian angel, right? So if you don't use your life experiences to protect you, mm -hmm. then you're at fault. Right. And it's not my duty to save you from that. We can tell the difference between a damsel in distress For sure. and an unruly that's, woman. Yeah, we can tell the difference. There's a, there's you a know what I'm saying? Without a doubt. Like, because <laughs> in, in the story, she was detailing when she had a lump on her head. She was detailing you how had to talk the about, dude. You had to say the lump. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, he had the whole the brick in his hand, and nobody mm -hmm. did anything. Yeah. I'm like, a, a yeah. full grown man yeah. has a brick in his hand, and you standing there talking to him. Yeah, exactly. Why weren't you Go running on, away, yeah, going yeah. back to the club, trying to get behind somebody? Yeah, something ain't right. Here. Something ain't right. Yeah. And exactly. again, it's it's it goes back, I think, to this audacity that I think feminism has created in women and mm. just the modern world of women not really having to face the mm. reality of yeah. men's physical superiority. Yeah. We see all these movies, Scarlett Johansson mm -hmm. beat up three, six foot five, 250 pound mm. dudes and Wonder Woman just mm -hmm. threw a dude across the, and it's yeah. like this idea that, oh, this is 
This is how it goes. Because I'm Colombiana in my head. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how it goes. And it's like, no, That's we know. Reality. Even yeah. if you're a grown man and you can actually fight, things yeah. can go left. Like, the For last sure. people to fight are professional fighters because yeah. they know things could go left. I mean, they, could kill it could, it, quick. they could kill or I can be killed. For yeah. sure. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It could be just a, a lucky day. My mom told me a story um, back in the day in Nigeria. She said these two dudes got off the bus and they were arguing. And um, you know it was they, they were about to fight. One mm. dude punched the other dude in the face. He died. Mm. And then you fast forward. Now you understand. Like some people walk around with, uh, I think it's called an embolism or something in their mm-hmm. brain, like a yeah. bubble in their brain, mm-hmm. and just the right type of force, in, uh, yeah. force mm-hmm. at the right time. Yeah, just like the football yeah. player who collapsed last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. The brother with the heart. Yeah, just the right, right type time. of force at the right, right time. time. So yeah. like, I think a lot of times we we frame it as somebody is scared of what might happen to them. No, mm-hmm. I'm also scared of what might happen to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And now something that could have been avoided or she, she he called me fat or whatever the case may be. Now I just killed a man. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when you look at ancient wisdom, a warrior, a true warrior, was never one who took advantage of someone who was weaker than them. A true warrior always looked at the weaknesses with inside of himself and conquered those weaknesses. So if you look at like, just like, like I said, ancient wisdom, where a man was being a leader mm-hmm. and the only way he can be a leader is by showing that he was able to dominate certain situations and circumstances. Without physical Without violence. Mm. Without physical abuse, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, let's go back and let's talk about the Martin Luther King aspect and the, the Malcolm X. See, Malcolm X was by any means necessary. Mm. Martin Luther King was by dominating by do love. Mm. Right? But that was a hard concept for most people to grasp because they're like, you can't change the reality of the world mm. through love. Malcolm X was like, nah, they come at me, I'm coming at them. Mm. Right? So... A true warrior is one that understands that if I can kill you without killing you, mm-hmm. I'm always going to be greater. I'm always going to be superior. I'll say this too, and and this this doesn't just go for violence, but it goes um, for for things in general. Um, I think the advantage that the white delegation has compared to us is they understand how to operate with stealth. Mm-hmm. They understand how to be unassuming. Mm-hmm. It's behind closed doors. Behind closed doors <laughs> and do so much like, damn damage. You don't damage. know. You don't know. With us, we going to air it out everywhere. We are so like, it's. I'm, Billboard. I'm, I, I'm starting a company to end. Mm-hmm. The, 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 we, we are so, and by the time we, we try to get things moving, um, we're already taken out. And, and similarly, on, on a small scale, mm-hmm. um, you walking around here acting like you Rambo over your girl. Mm. <laughs> you the sure. first one who gets taken out. First one. But the white dude with the with the with the t-shirt or the mm-hmm. little hunting jacket, mm-hmm. you don't know he got a 45 in his in his waist. Yeah. But he nice to everybody. Hey, how you yeah. doing? Exactly. And it's like I I I wish the big thing that would come out of this is for our women and for our men. Maybe we need to reconsider how we move. And instead of being so loud and ostentatious mm. and colorful and bright and all this exactly. good stuff that we celebrate, we need to think about being more meek. stealthy, being more meek, Without being more doubt. unassuming. Mm. Uh, one of my mentors, he calls it hiding in plain sight. For sure. Mm. Brother's a millionaire. He drives a 2002 Honda Civic. Mm. You don't I need to know. That for him, you don't need you to don't know need what's know. in my bank account. I love yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But... I think the, the the kind of agreed upon paradigm with black folks is I need to, I, I, I got my mortgage on my, on my neck. I got mm-hmm. my, my <laughs> a car note on my wrist. And it's yeah. like, you're making yourself a target. And similarly, mm-hmm. we make ourselves targets with our behavior. Without a doubt. With our disposition being rah, rah, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. When mm-hmm. like, really it's about, it's yeah. the dude who don't say much that you need to be worried about. That's the about. one you need to be worried about. Yeah. And that's the one that can teach you the most. Facts. We're, I it's, think we're at a disadvantage though, because- we're we're newbies. Mm. We're nouveau riche when it comes to coming into money. We're new at this. Mm. The white delegation has had a whole lot of years mm. to learn how to be quiet with yeah. their money. 
with their wealth, with their power. They've learned how to like move in the backgrounds. Mm. We're still in our infancy, honestly, with that. I, our, here now, yes, yes. Here, here, we're in our infancy. Mm -hmm. So for us, we want everybody to see it because in our community, to have it, that means you're up there. That's mm -hmm. your stature, like we were talking about earlier, Florida. Mm -hmm. And how everybody there got mm -hmm. Maybach's and mm -hmm. all that, and really got a twenty eight percent interest rate on <laughs> yep. the vehicle and two hundred credit score, you That's know, not and even probably four payments behind, <laughs> yeah. and ain't nothing came to buy a Happy Meal. Right. So mm -hmm. for us, it's all for us. We we as Black people feel like you have to see our wealth mm -hmm. because we're so new. At we want you to know we've got it. We're not mm -hmm. like those people that live on the south side of whatever city mm -hmm. and state you're in that are struggling. We're not on government assistance, even though you're probably buying stamps from somebody. You know right. what I'm saying? So. I, I give us that grace and understanding. Like I don't agree with it, mm -hmm. but I understand that for us, we're still, like I said, in our infancy with having these things, being able to be in a place where we can buy and afford mm -hmm. more things. I just want to give us grace. No, no, and, 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 we, we need it. and I understand that, and and that's a fantastic point. Um, for me, it goes beyond just the economic part. It's also mm -hmm. like how we move as far as safety. Just like oh, I was 100, saying, oh, 100%. With, with, with men and women, like the whole my boyfriend gonna pull up this thing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the same energy as for showing sure. that your your yeah. fancy yeah. car or your well, fancy you know, purse. Mm -hmm. It Our makes you a target. Our, I've seen. Mm -hmm. I can. Name five sitcoms that have been had like a spoof on. Mm. They're in a line somewhere, and a man disrespect the woman, and she's like, "Oh, my boyfriend will kick your ass. Mm. You, you get him, baby." And then the man's like, mm. "Oh man, I gotta fight this six two dude." Yeah. Or I gotta, or the man just shows up randomly in this big muscle cock mount. I just got out of prison. Mm. Like what? Jamie Foxx shows done it. Mm. Parkers have done it. Girlfriends have done it. like. I can think all these shows, the exact scenes where they've done that. So we have reinforced it in ourselves. So it's reality imitating art, <laughs> kind of. Like that backwards. Th to be fair, I think that's what's happening. Yeah. I think I think now we're 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 modeling our lives after art. Yeah. Whereas sure. art used to model itself after life. That's yeah. Nice, bro, for right? sure. Because yeah. because yeah. like I, even this idea of um, you know, uh, the the dude who's gonna the, the gorilla and he's gonna mm. protect me. He's gonna mm -hmm. throw this dude over there and punch this mm -hmm. dude in the face and pull out a full five mm -hmm. that he didn't have out he of might nowhere. Be a gentle giant. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it comes from. And, and that's kind of what I've been saying about um, what happens in scarcity. Mm -hmm. Boys tend to escape to video games. Girls tend to escape to novels and movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it shapes our perception of reality. And sure. unfortunately, <laughs> this, this kind of ties in too. Like, we mm -hmm. talk a lot about um, black men having Peter Pan syndrome, like dudes never growing up. Mm -hmm. Women have Peter Pan syndrome as well. Women in our community oh, have Peter sure. Pan syndrome. I'm talking about all from the ones who have a Hello Kitty tattoo mm -hmm. and they're 45 first, years first old. First of all, <laughs> did you not? <laughs> first of all, don't <laughs> don't don't let all the way to <laughs> yeah. all the way to the women who are still holding us to these like pseudo masculine, unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations mm -hmm. and not being willing to. Uh, uh, not reserve themselves, that's the wrong word, but um, mm -hmm. muffle themselves sometimes to avoid certain situations. Because yeah. a lot of times it's not even that deep. Muffle was a bad yeah. word. I, I couldn't think of the other yeah. word I wanted Censor. to use. Sen mm. Think before you act. It's something. This Sen muffle. Censor. Um, the, 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 the thing with me is like, mm. sometimes looking weak is actually the intelligent thing to do. Just like For you sure. said, uh, the, the meekness, that's, right? That's, Speak softly, carry a big stick. Yeah. But it's like our community in particular, because of that self-esteem deficit, mm -hmm. um, we are so adamant about people thinking we're strong, not knowing that it actually makes us. But do you know the internal intelligence of a human being is to know that if someone is not boisterous, that they're a threat? Mm. So if you if I'm in a club, you see me by myself and I'm just chilling mm. and you see all these other dudes right here, you know, they throwing bottles and everything at each other. The last person that's going to be a target is me. Mm. Right. Because the, in, the innate nature of a person is to prepare for war. You can't prepare for war if no one's giving you war. Right. Mm. So that means a person has to look at you and say, this person is a threat to me and able to prepare for war. Right. That's like if we go on a war with a country, if the country did something to us first, then that allows us to prepare for war. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, we don't know somebody 
been disliking us the whole time. We don't know they're coming from behind, right? So that's the same analogy with a person who carries themselves that way. If you carry yourselves in a way where you're not a target, you don't make yourself accessible, then how does a person know how to deal with you? They don't. Mm. So one of the, one of the greatest uh, lines I wrote, uh, uh, read in a book, it was uh, by John C. Maxwell, and he was talking about Adolf Hitler. And Hitler said, great is it that man do not think if. Just that one line. Because he was able to control and manipulate Right. <laughs> yeah. Just through that principle. Mm. And when you live, when you when you're dealing with American and Western culture. Right. That's how we have been taken advantage of. Right. Because we was influenced by the curriculum. Right. Mm. In social schools. And we studied their history as our own. Now, like you said, we're new to the money. The money has mm. been old. Right. The, 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 the riches has been old to us. We've come from a lineage of that. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that mm -hmm. because the history was stripping from us to, to teach us our value, mm -hmm. right? We know who Mansa Musa was, the richest man, right? But when you learn that as a black woman and black man, now you have a different perspective and your shift towards money because now you start to understand your value and where mm -hmm. you come from. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you're dealing with the Western hem hemisphere and curriculum, you're the most devalueless thing that can exist on the planet, mm. which is why you're the most targeted, mm -hmm. right? So if mm. you look at why you're the most targeted as a black man and black woman, now we have to get into why is the black woman have less respect for the black man? Because she has been given, right? Mm. The opportunity to be, right? Mm. Because she was allowed to not need him, to not need him mm. right? So we're going to give you this five, six hundred dollars worth of food stamps a month. We're gonna give you this section of the house, mm. but the man can't be in it. Mm. Right? So why is that whole circumstance and situation against us? Right? Which allows us to have a system to where as though we can't operate and communicate with one another. So when a black woman see a black man, she already see him as valueless mm. right off the back. Like you said, a default. You go to look at him as he ain't Nigga, I ain't, you ain't even worth listening to, listening to mm. right? When he could be the one that's really the one you should be listening to. Or even if he don't have all his shit together financially, but he could be smart. He could be really brilliant. Yeah. You think you're going to take advice from him? You're only going to take advice from him if he comes together with a certain package, mm. right? Where you can even put your ear to him. Oh, he got his shit together financially so I can listen to him, right? Mm. But you won't listen to him if he don't have that particular situation together. Because now his value goes down even more, right? So if you're in a relationship with him the whole time, he trying to help you raise yourself out the circumstances and situation, but you're not willing to listen, right? Mm. And that brings a war in our community, which allows us to be in a circumstance and situation that we're in. And the only way out for us is to what? Devalue ourselves. Mm -hmm. mm. Devaluing ourselves by promoting uh, music that we know Right, is not going to allow us to elevate. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you're going to listen to what we're listening to and elevate. The frequency is just ain't going. It's not going to allow you to change the vibration. Your energy is going to be of that. So, if you listen to a woman tell you all day that you're a bad bitch, right? That's what you're going to feel like you are. Mm -hmm. I'm a boss bitch, right? And if you hear that all day, every day, and you carry yourself in that manner, then when you do meet a man with value mm. and you come to him and say, look, I'm a bad bitch, I'm a boss bitch, right? Mm. How's he gonna look at you? Yeah. How I, is I, I think that's what, I, I think sometimes that's what kind of makes me feel hopeless in a way mm -hmm. about us because we're very, we're very flamboyant people. We're very colorful people. We're very, um, for, for, yeah. For, for instance, I was um, I was I was listening to a, a lecture by what's his name. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, Haley, Haley, hey, Alex Haley, Alex Haley, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how he went to he he retraced his um, lineage to uh, a village in Senegal, I believe. Mm. And they were talking about how um, 
all the history of uh, that village was kept by pretty much one dude, a griot, right? Mm. And the griot was in charge of knowing and being able to recite all the history of that clan or the different clans mm. of things that have happened over the years. And he also made the joke that, you know, Western, the Western world has made us lazy and, and not be able to use our brains full capabilities. And I thought to myself in that moment that, damn, that's so inefficient. <laughs> like to, 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 to expect one person mm. to retain all that information and regurgitate it in a way that's succinct and consistent mm. for decades to the end of their life and then transfer it to somebody else. And mm -hmm. as opposed to libraries mm -hmm. and writing this stuff down. So I say that to say it, and people fight me on this. I think a lot of, and I'm African, obviously, mm. there are a lot of aspects of our culture mm. and our traditions that are counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be honest about that for sure. and say that they're counterproductive and for instance, why are we so uh, influenced by music? Mm -hmm. I, I, Hispanic people, I think you can make an argument for that as well. But like, we're one of the only people mm -hmm. when it's time for intellectuals to come out, we're pushing rappers mm -hmm. and models mm -hmm. and, 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 and freaking reality stars to come speak for us. Mm -hmm. Because we're so moved by... The, the flamboyant and the colorful mm. and and we want Kanye to be yeah. articulate and mm. succinct in his thought process. Mm. Because we think those are the ones that are living the life we want to live. We think in our minds, they're the people that are successful. Mm -hmm. That is success. You have, they have all the money, mm -hmm. all the fame, all the mm -hmm. notoriety. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's what we're conditioned mm -hmm. to believe. Mm -hmm. When in reality, them folks can be just as, bro look at TLC. Mm -hmm. They don't. They didn't have nothing because they got screwed over. So we. But for us, the bigger you are, the mm -hmm. more you said, the more color, the more fanfare you have, the more esteem we put on you. Mm -hmm. And I think to your point about like that one man had the lineage, just mm -hmm. because we haven't been taught our true history, mm -hmm. we don't have a sense of pride about. Like you, so you mm -hmm. can say, "Oh, I'm proud to be black all day long," but to me, there's pride in knowing where you came from. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of my best friends, when she and her husband got married, they went to visit his family or whatever, and they had put their marriage in their, their book of their family history. Mm -hmm. All we got in my family is some dusty pictures that's got yellowing and browning around the sides, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone past my grandma my grandpa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other side, they, they take the time to write down Mm -hmm. to note to document, mark, so that, yes. document so that mm -hmm. you can look they can sit down with their children look back look what look at all we've come from what mm -hmm. we've accomplished mm -hmm. we've got to your point western culture and they right. put it how they wanted to put it mm -hmm. to not make us understand that we were kings and queens mm -hmm. emperors and empresses mm -hmm. you know we we were mm -hmm. the top yeah <laughs> but see, and this and this that's is what, that's that's how I look. That's what helps me but, to understand. But see, the, the, this is I, I think my my core point here is mm -hmm. kind of like I've, I, I'm getting so much backlash about uh, mm -hmm. that clip that I was criticizing mm -hmm. mothers. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I hate about us as black people, and when mm -hmm. I say black people, I want mm -hmm. I want to be clear. I'm not just I'm not talking about African Americans. Yes. I'm talking about the diaspora. I'm talking about Nigerians. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about African Americans. Oh, black mm -hmm. people across the world. Mm -hmm. We are unwilling to critique ourselves honestly. For sure. And because we're unwilling to critique mm -hmm. ourselves honestly, we jump to either really positive extremes mm -hmm. or really negative extremes. For sure. And that's the issue that I have. So mm -hmm. the, one of the negative extremes is that, you know, we focus so much on entertainment and you put on a good beat and mm -hmm. you can basically hypnotize black folks. Mm -hmm. yep. The other extreme is we were kings and queens. No, mm -hmm. they were kings and queens, but we yeah. weren't kings. We weren't all kings. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I know we weren't. Well, duh. <laughs> no, no, but I'm not yeah. saying. Oh, but, 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 but some people have that have that oh, mentality, yeah. Yeah. and it it instills in them some narcissism, even. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That 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 sense of I'm beyond reproach. You can't tell me shit. I'm yeah. a goddess. Yeah. I'm a king. I'm a queen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like because of these extre polar extremes that we operate yeah. in, we can't move forward to do things like. Yeah document our history mm, yeah. and also introspect and go back and say, oh, this was, for, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, you know, mm -hmm. people think, for instance, uh, 
it, it's nice that I'm Nigerian and I know my lineage and mm -hmm. things like that. One of the things we don't talk about about my people, Igbos, mm -hmm. we used to kill twins mm -hmm. because we thought they were evil. Mm -hmm. We used to kill Ibanos because we thought oh, they yeah. were evil. Like mm -hmm. there are some aspects of our culture mm -hmm. that is uniquely us, mm -hmm. but it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Female circumcision, it's bullshit. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. You see what I'm saying? But we 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 shouldn't wait until white people tell us it's bullshit yeah. for us to make that change for ourselves. But mm -hmm. very often... It's not until even some of the stuff I say, yeah. if a white dude said it, yeah. that nigga will have TED Talks and be all yeah. over. The, but we can't, whether it's men critiquing women, mm -hmm. black people critiquing black people, yeah. we don't know how to accept, uh, uh, um, wrestle with, yeah. interact, withhold critique. And yeah. I think part of it is that self-esteem, part of it is that flamboyantness that's just baked into all of us from Africans to African Americans to UK to and we need to start having real conversations about redefining a version of black moving into the future mm -hmm. that's not going to continue to be exploited mm -hmm. and is going to insist on defining and regulating itself yeah cuz see the, the the great example I can use in a situation like what you're talking about is to look at the chessboard mm. Right, you know how to play chess. Mm -hmm. So we look at the chess board. You ever play chess? No, I've watched. Okay, so I, in chess, yeah. you have the king, queen. You got you know all of the powerful pawns. pieces in mm -hmm. the background, mm -hmm. and then you have the pawns, right? So in life, that's always going to be the order, right? You always going to have someone who has the the mind to be in a position of power, someone who's able to delegate and control people, right? And you're always going to have the pawns. The reality is every pawn wants to be a king, mm. right? So when you move a pawn forward on the chess board, what you're doing is as the dictators, you're telling that pawn to sacrifice your life if you want to be in a position as, as such as myself, mm. right? Mm. So as the pawn is moving forward to attack the other person's property, that pawn alleviates itself off the board. Why the king and queen or the other powerful pieces remain in power to be able to say, you know, I'm protected by those who are willing to sacrifice them, their lives for me, right? So it's the same in war. It's the same when you're dealing with government, right? We've been playing this game since humanity has been in existence, right? It's always been someone who has chose to be the powerful piece. Now, the reality is, how do you become the most powerful piece on the board? Right? You have to understand the game. And if you don't understand the game, that means you get pushed out there as the pawn. Right? So we've been pushed out there as pawns. Right? Our history has been pushed out there as pawn, as a pawn. So when you look at your history, you say, okay, well, what lineages do we come from? Right? And you say, okay, well, we all have been kings and queens. Right? There's always been slavery. Mm -hmm. Right? So we go, we, we focus on Western civilization of slavery, but we don't look at self-enslavement, mm -hmm. right? Or how we took advantage of one another, mm -hmm. weaknesses to control the, the dynamics of, you know, economics. Mm -hmm. So now if we look at this and we say, okay, well, why do we continue to play this same game of rulership? Why do people have to be led? Do you feel like people have to be led or do you think they have the power to lead themselves? which is why we continue to vote, right? Mm. <laughs> Every four to eight years for someone who tells us the same story, yeah. right? But we never learn from our history because we're too fascinated with thinking that if we just believe in the history, it'll ultimately change itself one day. Mm -hmm. mm. I so, think also like in addition to that, I think uh, as black people, I think sometimes we have our heads in the clouds, right? So. On a small scale, we talk about how women don't think that they need to be under the guidance of a man. Or mm -hmm. They don't need they, they 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 don't think they need to dress a certain way or act a certain way to be respected or protected. Mm -hmm. And the reality is not that. Similarly, I think as black folks, we don't think um, there are certain sacrifices and certain inconveniences that are necessary for us to actually mm -hmm. uh, be successful mm -hmm. as a community. Right? Mm -hmm. We think everybody can be a leader. Mm -hmm. So we we don't want to follow nobody's leadership and then nothing gets done. Exactly. We think that um, we we can get 
uh, life exists in a utopia. There's mm. enough for everybody and everybody's going to, and it's like the reality is not that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wish it were, it should be, whatever the case may yeah. be. And I think part of that is because we come from an environment where, you know, in your neighborhood, you pretty mm-hmm. much have everything you need. You got the water, natural resources, the whole nine mm-hmm. in mind. So this is my kingdom, that's your kingdom. Mm-hmm. White people come from a different environment where mm-hmm. they had to conquer, they had to mm-hmm. invade and things like that. And I think we still have that mindset of, mm-hmm. I have everything I need, everybody else has everything. So mm-hmm. we're not vigilant enough mm-hmm. to prepare for the rest of the world that's operating under a different set of rules. Different set of rules. And because of that, we'll continuously be exploited. Now it's with the music and the culture mm-hmm. and things like that. And I think until we start thinking ahead mm-hmm. and understanding that shit is not sweet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This <laughs> is this is the world is not Africa anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it means that we have to evolve ourselves in how we present ourselves and how we anticipate mm-hmm. the presentation of the world, mm-hmm. right? But let, you, know, it, you know what's interesting? I want yeah. to say one last thing. What's interesting is you ever heard of the saying that um, God couldn't civilize the devil? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard that. Okay, no. so in 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 our culture as black men, we've always equated the white man as the devil because mm-hmm. of his acts. Right, his acts has always been uncivilized. The black man and black woman has always been civilized, mm-hmm. right? We've cultivated history, culture. We create everything that you possibly can imagine that enriches society, right? The white man comes and he subtracts from that. He takes away from, right? He creates these evil deeds. So the saying is, God could not civilize the devil. But in our, our pursuit of this this mentality that we can do that, right? Instead of alleviating the devil off the board, we continue to allow the devil to play the game, mm. right? So even if you look at biblical context, right? On how the devil was even allowed to pursue, right? The woman, as they would mm. say, right? Mm. Uh, as the weaker vessel and God allowed that to take place, why didn't God just end the game? We, right. we we can have a conversation about God, but that's yeah. going to that's that's, take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying that, but that brings us back to how everything mm-hmm. continues to transpire right. between us. Mm-hmm. Because the only way to alleviate the problems in which we're dealing with is we have to learn to look at that existing within inside of the human being, mm-hmm. right? So if you say that, how do I become the master player of the game, back to what I was talking about earlier, is to understand the war that exists within inside of you, mm. right? Which is God and devil, if you look at it that way, right? Mm. Civilized and uncivilized. Mm. And if we look at what we what we do as a community, right? A lot of our acts are uncivilized, but we're trying to figure out a way to have those civilized impacts mm. so that we can change the dynamics between the conversations between black man and black woman. When we stop looking at each other as competition, and start being companions. Mm. I feel like that's where the shift will happen. That's where the shift will because happen. Because and with black men and women, often we we are in competition with each other. Mm-hmm. But if we were companions and mm-hmm. we explored that relationship to its fullest, that's where the we'd be unstoppable. Yeah. We're gonna pause it right there. We're gonna come back to episode that. four <laughs> coming <laughs> soon. Coming soon. Um, appreciate y'all. Thank yes, y'all. Yes, sir. Of course. Absolutely. Great combo. Absolutely.